by saying congratulations on the film. I've had a chance to to sit down and take a look at it, and it's a great film, so congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. That's, that's very kind of you to say. So, Jack, tell us a little bit about where the idea for After She Died first came from for you. Was there something that, that sparked this idea in the first place? Yeah, so I, I wrote the film all the way back in uh, 2019, actually, when started, I started writing the, uh, the first draft of it. Um, I wrote it at the same time as a short film I worked on at the same time called uh, It Feels Like Spring, yeah. uh, which came out and played at a bunch of festivals. It was sort of this otherworldly drama, so I wrote that, and I wrote After She Died back to back, and they're sort of uh, of the same vein. They, they explore a lot of similar themes. They explore a lot of uh, uh, the same general ideas, but in two very, very different ways. Uh, it came to me while I was uh, a weekend of binge-watching Asian horror movies, and I, I thought, ooh... I like this, I've got this idea, I think I, I've got the approach for the story, and I just started writing it, and three years later, here we are. Despite being a horror, there's a real natural feel to this film when you're watching it. The characters feel so real. Did you base the characters on people you know or have known in the past? Was there a reason why they feel so natural? Uh, well, thank you, firstly. Um, <laughs> there, there's not... There's never any, like, specific people where I'm like, okay, this is based on this person in my life, this is based on this person in my life. But I think naturally, when you write things, you know, you you pull from the the people you know, the things you know, the world around you. So there's definitely elements of uh, my loved ones and friends and family that get pulled. And even myself, there's a lot of myself in in a lot of these characters and and flaws I found myself and frustrations I found myself that, that definitely get pulled in. You mentioned that little bit of inspiration as well from Asian horror. Asian horror is uh, famous for putting um, themes and topics into its horrors that are bubbling away there under the surface. Was that something that you wanted to address when you sat down to work on this? Like, what kind of themes and topics did you want to want to um, bring out in the film? Uh, it's interesting. It's it's obviously a movie that's that deals a lot with death and grief but that was never sort of the initial intention it just sort of became about that you know i had the idea for the story and this this resurrected mother who comes back as her younger self and she starts learning from the world around her and learning all the wrong things and that was always the the genesis of the idea and the themes kind of grew from there but it, it always started as this this way of uh, letting go of the past and, and letting go of the things that you you probably don't need to hold on to anymore, which is, like I was saying earlier, a similar theme in my, my short film, it feels like spring. Um, and then from there, you know, grief seemed to be the, the natural way of telling that story, and then I, I got to delve into a lot of dark and emotional themes through that. Well, that was one of the things I found interesting with this film. I, I like to watch a lot of, um, of what I call family horror, but normally it's the child that's the horror. If you go back and think of classic films like Julia Darling, it's the daughter or the son that is the horror. You kind of turn that around. When did that idea come to you about turning that around? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. There are a lot of uh, uh, very creepy children and very famous creepy children in movies. And, uh, you know, I, I myself am, am pretty young, and so I, I always thought it was a sort of uncomfortable and, and uncanny idea if your your parent figure in your life is the one you can't trust. You know, they're meant to be there to raise you, to love you, to care for you, but what happens when that person doesn't love you and doesn't care for you and doesn't even really remember you and they have to sort of relearn who they once were, but they learn all the wrong things and it starts to take a, a violent turn. I thought that was an interesting subversion and an interesting uh, angle to approach it. Now tell us a little bit about casting, because like I said, there's that natural feel to this film all the way through it, and your script is one of the reasons why that is so natural, but then that means that you have to find actors and actresses that also match that natural feel for the characters. How did you go about casting, and how did you know that you had the right people? Yeah, so casting actually took quite a while. Um, we, I had... Uh, some, it was an audition course. Anybody could audition whether you had representation or not, if you were just around, if you never acted before, if you were quite established. I was open to seeing everyone. Um, you know, this is my first feature film, so I wasn't entirely sure how many applications we'd get. I just sort of put it out there and we were like, all right, let, let's find out who applies. Uh, and we ended up getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people interested in it. 
which was crazy to me. Um, so it was a long process of just going through all of the applicants and then getting them to send in some, some self tapes and then from the ones we liked, we went to in person auditions and there were a few rounds of that and some chemistry tests with the cast members and reading different scenes and Zoom meetings and it's probably about four months all up of just auditioning all these wonderful, wonderful local actors until I, I found the right ones. There are a few that like from the first audition I was like, I'm probably going to cast this person, but you know, you, you want to make sure because you're going to be stuck with them for two, three years. You want to make sure they're right. And I'm very happy with the, uh, the cast members we found. I think they're all, they're all fantastic and they're all fresh and young upcoming actors. And I think you'll be seeing a lot more of them in the coming years. They're all great, but Liliana and Vanessa really stood out. Tell us a little bit about what it was about them that made them, made you know that they were perfect for their roles. Yeah. So, um, those two were actually probably the first people I had in mind during the auditions. Um, I think as soon as I saw Liliana's audition, I was like, okay, I think, I think I found my gen here. Um, and Vanessa actually had auditioned for me before for a, I don't know if she remembers this, but there was a, a short film I produced. I didn't direct it. I, I produced it a couple of years ago and she was, she was one of the applicants on that and I quite liked her, but she couldn't, she couldn't make it into, into that film for scheduling reasons. And then she auditioned again for me for after she died. Uh, she was the very first person we auditioned for this movie. Actually, she was applicant number one and she, she stuck all the way through to the end. Um, Florence ended up being the the last character we cast, so she was the first audition and the last person to get the role. But um, no, I mean they they were fantastic, and I mean seeing them together and seeing them on tape was amazing. But then seeing them audition again in person was just an absolute confidence booster. Of oh yeah, I've, I've got to get these people in my movie. Jack, you mentioned about this being your first feature. We have a lot of filmmakers that listen to this show. What was the thing that you noticed was the biggest step for you going from short films through to a feature? Was there something that, that really stood out that was so different that you didn't expect it to be so different? Yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, I've worked on a lot of feature films before as a PA in different departments and sort of running around on these big sets. And I've made, like you said, a lot of short films over the years. So you come into it sort of a little bit cocky. You're like, oh, yeah. I know how to make a feature, I've made short films, I've been on feature sets, I know how this works, but then you start doing it for like 18 days straight and you're like, oh, wow, I don't know how to make a feature, this is, this is on a different level. Um, so you just gotta, you just gotta come into it with confidence and it's every day is just solving a different problem and, and you know, if you come into it with a plan, if you come into it just fully prepared with shot lists and storyboards and your rehearsals and we had meetings with the whole crew just to go through day by day the plan so everyone was on the same page um it just it helps so much and you'll face problems you didn't even realize were going to be problems but if you know you, you had a good team you'll you'll solve it it's a pretty intense film as well how did you go about working um with your actors and actresses to to make sure they were okay during this because yeah it's a pretty intense film it is, yeah. There's uh, there's some heavy, heavy stuff. Uh, a lot of the the intensity and the violence and the gore actions ends up being some of the uh, the more fun scenes to shoot. Um, I think the one thing that sort of added an extra layer of pressure to us was time, um, because we had such a small budget. We only had 18 days to shoot this movie, which is not a lot of time. Um, so it was a lot of preparation. It was a lot of rehearsals. We had weeks and weeks of rehearsals just on and off with different actors. Um, just going through all the scenes, going through the plan, going through the shots, just going through what will be required of them. And then on the day, it's just about creating a safe space for them, creating a safe environment. Uh, you know, if they, if it gets too much, if it gets too intense, cause there's, there's certainly some heavier, more emotional moments about, you know, giving them the time they need. And if you need to kick some crew off, it's not some crew, but if you need to give the, the actors some space and get the crew out of the room for five minutes, you just got to do that to let them get in the right headspace. Uh, it's just about treating them with the respect that uh, the actors deserve. Now, the film picked up a couple of awards at A Night of Horrors International Film Festival. Tell us a little bit about that and, and how that made you feel picking up those awards. That was a great night. That was oh, a couple nights, two nights. Uh, that was a fantastic time. Um, the film at that stage had already come out uh, in North America. Uh, we already had our North American release. Uh, and that went very well. That was quite a success. And then it was the Australian premiere, so I finally got to bring the film home 
to Australia, uh, thanks to the wonderful people at Night of Horror. Uh, Bryn and Rob and that whole team were, were amazing and holding us and hosting a wonderful premiere, a wonderful Q&A. And, um, yeah, we were, we were so stoked to get the award. It was, it was very validating to win a, not just any award, but like a horror festival award in our home city of Sydney where we shot the movie. Uh, it was a super amazing night. Now, as you mentioned, the film has already been out in North America, but it's about to become available here in Australia on January the 13th. Can you tell us a little bit about how people will be able to watch this film? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the film will be out on uh, video on demand. Uh, we had a, a North American distributor. Uh, it was accessed there. We've, we're playing on Tubi over there. It's a Blu-ray release. It's available on VOD over there. And then... We tried for months and months and months to, to get the film into Australia, to get it into the Australian audience's eyes. Uh, and eventually, after a lot of rejections and a lot of uh, struggles, we, we were like, all right, well, let's just do it ourselves. So we are distributing the movie ourselves. We are releasing it ourselves. Uh, the film is available on Vimeo On Demand in Australia. Uh, so if you head to AfterSheDied.com, you'll find all the details. And you'll be able to order it there. You get a bunch of bonus features, uh, audio commentary. It'll be it'll be great. January 13th, AfterSheDied.com. Awesome. Now, Jack, I know you need to get to set. So to finish off, uh, what would you like to say to people out there who are about to sit down and watch After She Died? Uh, I would say, firstly, thank you. You're amazing. I love you. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a very small movie. It's a very low-budget movie. It's a very indie movie. And those types of movies are very hard to get made. It takes a lot of love and a lot of hard work from a lot of people. Uh, and so if you give the film a chance, then I just, we really appreciate it. You know, we, we put three years of our life into this movie and we are very appreciative of anybody who sits down and watches it.